Um, so I guess welcome to the tutorial. Uh, things should be moving pretty fast. Uh, everything here is sped up about 50%. What we're going to be going through is basically the process to set up a rig that will make you be able to generate different types of foliage quickly and easily. Um, low polygon, of course, for game assets. Um, what's happening right now is I'm just basically setting up the stem and since I'm going to be doing multiple instances of the stem later on in the rig uh, where it's going to randomly pick from the different variations that I'll be configuring uh, so the more efficient way to do that is as you're building your pieces especially with something small like this since we're just doing a fern basically just a stem in a plane um, would be just to handle the UV right away, which is what you saw me doing there. Um, you'll have to excuse the, the glitch that's happening. Uh, my video card did not like recording in HD and working in Cinema 4D, obviously. Um, trying to think. What I did is basically just set up the UV while it was nice and clean and then just went ahead and sliced it up so that way later the deformation, bend deformation that we'll be applying to the stem will have some polygons to actually be able to distort. Um, another thing just for caretaking is to make sure that your origin for your mesh is in the correct position before you get too far. I mean, especially since this is a very specific thing um, and we want the origin of all the stems to be basically controlled, that it would be smart to before I duplicate or do anything else, get that shape completely the way that I want. Um, and then what you're seeing here is I just duplicated that shape, kept the UV, moved the UV over just a hair, um, and I did that a total of two more times to make three different stems, basically all with the basic same UV design. Um, from there, I'm able to resize them, scale them, do different things to them, even assign slightly different colors, which will add some variety later in the, the rig. Um, now I'm just sticking in some bend deformers and changing the shape of the stems a little bit just to give some variation. Um, a lot of these steps that we're doing in this first part are just to get ready to actually make the rig, which um, if I have time here, I'll show you how to do all the mo or the Espresso connections to control your MoGraph controllers. Um, just making general tweens and adjustments right now to where the positions of the stems are, which is kind of unnecessary, but uh, I, yeah, I was just flowing along. I wasn't really thinking too hard here. Um, I just wanted to get, get the idea down. Um, what was happening right there was realigning the origin rotation, um, making sure that those still were aligned to what I wanted. And I, I accounted for the offset of the 10% rotation that I, I spun them at to account for the bend. That's why they're skewed that way a little bit. Um, which actually is not ideal. I believe I go ahead and put them back to vertical here. Um, especially since I'm going to be trying to attach the leaves basically. Which is what you're seeing right now. Um, they don't need to have very many polygons at all and you don't really even have to put the tips in them. A lot of people will distort the tips of their polygon and add another slice in, um, which you see right there where I'm pulling the ends up. That's really unnecessary. Uh, you can control all that later on through your, uh, your texturing. In fact, you could probably just get away with a flat plane there and just curve it a little bit, but I like giving the general shape. It, it just helps. Um, and then before you see me here raising it up and then I have the realization that I don't want to do that because before I actually do that to the leaf we're going to want to get a frontal projection on it, a nice clean projection. I'm also setting the origin so that way when I duplicate it uh, the origin's already set. So I'm just hopping around cameras, did a quick frontal projection and then checking the UV positionings of the other objects to make sure I don't have any overlaps. Uh, if you're unsure, a quick way to check if you have any overlaps is just go ahead and unify the objects real quick, check the UV. Um, if you're all good, just undo that. 
and they'll split the objects back up again or you can join all the objects and then split them out later by group if you need to um, eventually the whole idea of this is once the rig generates the plant setup that you'll be able to just hit a button generate a whole nother setup uh, right click on the rig itself and say current state to object or connect objects and delete and it will create a uh, unified mesh basically with all the correct UV um, distortions applied everything like that and then we'll show you how to stick that into an object file um, and how to actually handle importing all those and assigning textures in Babylon um, just making simple adjustments, slight modifications to each leaf, so even though they have the same UV, their MIP ratio, which is the ratio of the polygon surface area to the resolution on the UV map, is a little bit different, so that way it'll, it'll make the leaves look, have a little bit of variety. Um, you're also seeing me make sure that they are not layered, so that there could be effectively three different leaves. Um, you can even extend this process a little bit farther and do different shapes uh, with those exact same layer stacks. So it actually looks like I did six leaves. So, which is, yeah, that's, that's probably a good idea. Three stems, six leaves, so there's two variations for each. Um, there's still going to be a little bit of setup on the meshes after the fact, which would mainly be making sure that our rings and our slices are in place for the bend deformer to make sure that there isn't any gaps between the stem and the leaf, which isn't that hard to pull off. Uh, I just kind of do it on the fly here, but later uh, in phase two, I will go through and set up the, the planes a little better with their slices and make sure that they're a little more consistent. Um, just a little bit of organizing and housekeeping right now. Making sure that all of my objects and things are all in the right position and identified, labeled. Uh, as you start getting more advanced rigs and scenes, this, that's definitely a requirement. Otherwise, you're going to be clicking through objects, wondering where you're at. Um, just waiting now, seeing if anything happens. I uh, see that I'm applying the bend deformers. What it, to be able to do that, basically, since I want the deformer to apply to two separate objects, you create a null container that contains the objects that you want to deform, and then you stick the deformer underneath the null object, um, as opposed to the object that you want to bend. And it will take the all the objects in that hierarchy then and deform them. That, that applies for all deformers. Um, I'm not sure what it is in Blender, sorry guys, but yeah, C4D is king. So, um, it's going through here, yeah, just housekeeping still again. Um, eventually here I'm just going to move on to a simple drop down of the fern basically where I'm just grabbing the solo elements and just placing them real quick just so I have a reference to check my UVs and to check the structure of the meshes things like that just to get an idea of the look um, again if you know what the whole process is you can pretty much skip this step this was just to keep the video within a conformed time frame um, and to kind of give you the idea also you'll be seeing me drop into substance painter it's not a requirement for this you can definitely uh, just do it in Photoshop. Um, you'll just probably need to export your UV lines so that way you have some sort of template, uh, which in part two, I will also show how to do that. Now, if you see, if you look there, the stem does have a separation from the leaf like I was saying was gonna happen. That is due to just the UVs not exactly messing up, or lining, or not the UVs, the loops not exactly lining up on the two separate meshes which causes the deformer to apply at different different points so they they warp a little bit differently but the quick cushion for that is just kind of eyeball where you need to add extra loops and just kind of stick those in real quick um it's kind of sloppy the way i'm doing it right now honestly uh when we go to do part two i'll do a 
I'll, I'll, I'll do a better looping there and we'll do all that prior to sticking them into the bend deformers um, because when you're doing a rig it's really really important that you have all of your independent pieces that are going to be going into the rig have their own identified UV that they have uh, basically a system to keep them within the conformed regiment for texturing uh, scaling you just want it for diversity in the mesh you're going to want to make sure that you have it set up correctly so that way when you hit random you're not having to sit there and go and make manual settings manual settings manual settings that's the whole purpose of making a rig so um yeah just basically setting this up you can skip this step if you really wanted to um and kind of browse ahead or just kind of follow along if you're following along right now um all this is pretty much useless it's just to show the system and show the texture and setup so um and if i remember right i actually kind of messed up when i do this because when you export your initial your initial object or whatever you're going to be using as your mock-up for the texturing you need to have every single mesh that is going to be included in your rig exported in that object even if they're not in the correct positions uh, that is mainly just so your program like substance painter can see them you wouldn't honestly have to do that if you're if you're texturing in Photoshop and you know where your UVs are you could kind of skip that step but the, with my workflow um, I like definitely to use Substance Painter now, especially once you get into using Substance Designer as well, and you're able to make procedural leads or things like that. So besides uh, having a rig to make your meshes, you would come up with material sets that when you go into Substance Painter, you just have your masks set up correctly and your layer set up correctly, and you just hit random generate on them, and you can keep pumping through different variations of the texture, uh, different leaves, different uh, moss growth patterns, uh, different rock patterns, etc. It, it, it's all just up to your imagination, and I would definitely, definitely recommend getting a diversity of programs and learning when to use a certain program, when not to use a certain program. There are times where sculpting, I'll sculpt right in C4D, uh, and then there's times where I'll sculpt in ZBrush. There's times where I'll retopo in C4D, there's times I'll retopo in ZBrush. Pretty much um, my main texturing suit now is uh, uh, definitely the algorithmic programs, they top of the line. Um, I'll probably be doing some tutorials on them here at some point as well. S saving out the object, just making sure that I keep my file hard organized here for my games, because this eventually this rig I'm gonna end up using in the Legends game that I'm working on. Um, so you'll you'll see it in action eventually here. Um, this is Substance Painter, if you're not familiar. Uh, all I'm doing is creating a new project, loading the mesh. I don't know why I kept hitting open, I should have been hitting new. Um, setting it to OpenGL, just going with a high quality metal shader. I mean, it's fine, just as long as I have a diffuse channel is all I'm worried about. Uh, diffuser base color and as you can see there since I only exported it looks like the first stem and leaf three uh, two three and uh, four that those are the only ones that substance painter sees so like I was saying that's I would want to have exported all of mine meshes so that way at least in my UV view there on the right it had all of them um, what you also saw me do is go through and delete all of the extra texture maps. None of them are required. Um, all I need is the color. So what I did to just focus on the color is I hit the keyboard shortcut C, which brought you into solo mode, allowing you just to see the color. Um, just making some quick, quick suggestions of light, and then I'll move on to... Uh, exporting the texture. Um, the way that I'm doing this right now is 
uh, I end up splitting up the layers and doing a separate black-white texture just for the alpha, which isn't ideal because in Substance Painter you can have your materials generate the alpha, or I can go through and I can uh, paint an alpha layer. But I, like I said, I was flying through this, so I wasn't using my brain and wasn't doing the steps normally like I would. Uh, also, right there to make sure that you don't get plain your wrapping on your painting. Um, you set your brush mode to UV, um, so that way it's only applying to the UV that you want to paint on. Just some real quick painting for those that are interested. I mean, it's nothing fancy, but it'll give you an idea how you can quickly pump out suggestive light. Um, and this is just a quick way I figured out how to make fern type leaves as well. Well, it looks kind of stupid at first, but as soon as you do your your touch of blend, it, it pulls off pretty well. Um, ideally, like I said, you'd want to be doing your whole texture right now. So you, we'd want to have the two other stems there and the three other leaves and pumping out all the variations of them at once. Um, also, ideally, would be to have a substance material so a substance designer material that we had already created for making these fern leaves which maybe in part two i'll go over it doesn't it's not that hard to do so we'll go over that and hopefully uh um you'll learn a thing or two about creating organic foliage uh textures quickly again right here just trying to set up quick sets of light and that way you can infer basically a lot of information just by using two colors. You, you just throw down a base, then you throw down your, your highlights or your shadows and come back through. Um, depending on the style that you're looking for, you, you might want to blend them or you might want to keep them sharp. Uh, it just really depends on the aesthetic feel that you're shooting for. So each one of the leaves then I'm just kind of doing a little bit different. Um, every bit of variation that you're able to get into the texture really plays out well in the models uh, because it's not there's not very much polygon information there this is all just alpha tricks and texturing tricks to try to infer more geometry than is really there um, kind of running out of things to talk about as I'm just painting those up uh, I'm doing this all with a mouse as well. My dog ate my stylus, punk, um, and I haven't gotten a replacement yet, so it's a little bit slower. My workflow is probably, you know, quite a bit faster, at least it seems, when I'm using the stylus. So I would recommend getting a stylus and getting accustomed to that. If you've never worked with one, they are magical. Um, so again, using just that blend, trying to get a quick leaf reference or a quick leaf kind of look. You can really get that to look good if you take your time and work it a little bit. Uh, but just for timekeeping, I was being really sloppy and just moving fast. So then here's uh, the setup for the alpha. Um, in order to get rid of the inference of a polygon shape, you, it would definitely behoove you to just kind of blur out the edges completely and get those out of the way and then work on your shape from there. Um, that's optional, especially depending on what is the object that you're trying to represent. Um, you guys ought to excuse me, that's my roommate in the background. So sorry if... Uh, you guys hear anything? Um, just going through and cutting out the edges on the leaves. Again, uh, this process can pretty much be skipped and you can move on to uh, the rigging because I'll end up having to go back through and do the textures anyways um, since we didn't get all of the mesh faces into this import. But that's quick and simple and with Substance Painter you can also import new mesh data and it will recalculate every single one of the strokes that you have done on either the new mesh data or the new UV that you load in. Um, it's pretty cool actually how it handles that. Uh, 
Just trying to generalize the shape of a leaf. Uh, again, it's really hard to paint with a brush or with a, uh, a mouse. Uh, it's a really high DPI mouse and it's on a, cl a cloth mouse pad too, so it's not, not ideal. Um, yeah, I would honestly skip this step, but it's good for anybody who's interested in how to just do quick paints and uh, manual paints of textures. But for this project, I really, really am trying to avoid doing manual things. I'm only one person, and the amount of content that I'm looking to deliver, rigs and procedural generation of content is going to be the only way to pull it off. So I think, yeah, in, no, uh, in the second phase of this tutorial, I'll definitely set up a fern leaf rig. Uh, but that'll be later on. So as we're closing up here on this tutorial, uh, about five minutes left, just fixing the shape on those. And then I will be exporting the two materials, um, or the two textures, importing them into Photoshop, applying the opacity. Well, actually that's later on. I think just in this one I export the two and then bring it back into Cinema 4D. Since Cinema 4D doesn't recognize alpha channel in PNGs, you have to have a separate alpha mat. Uh, so there's a couple steps in between seeing it in C4D and seeing it in Babylon. But that's not too hard. It takes about 10 seconds in Photoshop to apply an opacity map and save out a PNG. Um, Uh, just saving out the textures here. I hope it's still recording actually. Yeah, it looks like that's still going and that's still going. We're good. Okay. Um, didn't need the normal map, didn't need anything else, just needed the black and white there. So that's how Substance Painter ends up exporting the colors. It can do cl uh, cleaner ones. It just depends on how much your UVs filled in there. Now I'm just importing these objects or these textures onto it. It doesn't. I don't need to include them in the directory mainly because this is just temporary. I'm just trying to visualize what's going on, which. Let's see, boom, okay, cool, my UVs are obviously set up about right, uh, things are all looking pretty good, so at this point, it would be going back and getting everything ready to really be rigged and randomly generated and getting the espresso set up, which we'll keep for the second version here, um, export out this object, just as a temp, just so I have it. Save everything, just deleting the extra stuff, keeping the parts there, saving that out, because that's what we want. That's the most important part, was just those pieces like that. Um, that was one of my tree generators, that's one of my flower generators. Um, you can really take this to the umpteenth level, like there's the actual generator for that flower. And I can generate so many different variations of that flower. There's an object for just ground cover plants. So you get an idea of what different objects kind of look like. Um, I don't know why I was about to go to Gmail and things there. Loading up the level editor and just showing the new, or showing how the assets can be placed. Um, pretty much I'll be including the fern here and the second part will show it in the system, show how it looks in engine. But other than that, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post comments or message me on HTML5 Game Developers. Uh, look me up. I'm Primate. Other than that, hope you had a happy holiday and hope you learned something. Take it easy. Bye.